Hi everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to birth particles and make them follow um, a path using the plugin Typhlo um, to create an output that looks something like this where particles or spheres just birth out of a, um, out of a platform and then run along a, um, a path. So um, this might be really useful for you know city planners, urban designers or architects if they want to um, you know, maybe try and simulate the movement of, of different um, pedestrians um, um, following a, a certain path because when you actually look at this from the top view, it's actually not too dissimilar to almost like a, a you know, a simulation of pedestrian movement. So um, without further ado, let's get started. Um, I might just go and click new and clear this all and just show you how it's done from scratch. So I'll, I'm going to work in my perspective view. So first things first, we're going to go into the create um, um, the create option here, and we're going to go into just the regular geometry, and we're just going to click on tie flow, click and drag, and we're going to actually turn on tie flow. Next, what we're going to do is we're just going to go into the helper section, and we're going to create a tie icon platform. This is the platform where our um, particles will get birthed eventually. Um, um, but we'll, you know, we'll draw it just now, just so that we have it for later. So going back into tie flow, if I go into the modify section, I can open the um, graphics user interface of tie flow, and this is where I I can begin to control um, uh, you know tie flow itself. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to birth um, add a birth controller in. Um, I might just for um, um, yeah, I'll keep that number the way it is. Um, I, I want it to birth a total of 200 um, um, particles um, um, between the 0 and 400 frames that I'm working to. Um, you'll see that even though that I've got a birth controller, actually nothing is happening um, because TyFlow doesn't actually know where to um, birth these or, or create these um, these particles from, and we need to tell um, and we need to tell TyFlow where to actually birth these icons. So we already drew a platform before, and ideally this is where I want my particles to birth from. So what I'll need to do is I'll just need to add a position icon controller in, and I'm going to pick the surface, and I'm going to pick this, and I'm going to create the, uh, I'm going to pick the the TyFlow TyFlow pl platform that we drew before. Um, and you can see now that's added in. What this does is it creates a relationship between the birth um, controller and the tie flow platform itself. So you can begin to see now on the screen there, you can begin to see now the um, the particles are now being birthed on the actual tie, uh, tie flow platform itself. Um, you would have seen in my original video that the particles were actually moving rather than being stationary. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give these particles some life um, in terms, sorry, some movement um, in terms of how they actually, um, you know, once they've um, birth, they don't just sit there in stationary. So I'm going to um, um, add a speed controller in underneath the position icon. Um, and once I've done that, um, you can actually see that it just starts spitting out random particles in all different directions. That's because the direction is in random 3D. Um, I want my um, um, icons to just appear and then move off in their own uh, path direction. So what I'm going to do is instead of random 3D, I'm going to change this to arrow along arrow icon, and I'm just going, but and I'm just going to tell which arrow um, for uh, the the particles need to follow. So I'm just going to go pick pick, and I'm just going to choose this arrow here. And once that's done, is unfortunately you'll see that the particles actually now. Um, flow in a downward direction. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to reverse that direction um, by ticking that box here, and this will make the particles just randomly birth um, vertically. But as you can see, it almost creates like a stream of particles, and um, I, I don't want it to just you know fly up. I want them to emerge and stay stationary at the surface. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, um, and the reason why it does this is because the particles right now. They're, they're doing whatever they like. They're not actually bound by the laws of physics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a uh, physics shape controller to um, to TyFlow. And what this will do is it will imp um, 
Oh, sorry, that's right. Sorry, before you actually do that, firstly, you want to make um, give it um, a shape. So let's just drag the shape controller um, in, uh, into into um, into the tie flow. And basically, what this will do is you can see that right now when it shoots up, um, it's currently just dots at the moment. Um, we want it to be a bit more interesting. So what we'll do is um, once we've added the shape controller in, we'll go to 3D and we'll change this to a sphere. Just the mid res sphere is, is probably good. Um, uh, and, um, and we'll need to just drag this below the speed. Um, so, um, and then we'll, and, but you can, even though that we've assigned this shape, you can still see it's still coming up as dots. So what we just need to do is just go to the, dis the display controller and change this from small dots to geometry. So you can begin to now see that they are little um, little spheres. Um, and what I might just do is I might just go back into the shape controller and change the scale to maybe 250. So you can now begin to see they're a bit more bigger in sphere. As I mentioned before, um, I don't want these spheres to just shoot up um, and just you know and break the laws of physics. I want them to pop up, stay on the surface, and then move along in their path. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to add the physics shape controller in, and what this will do is, um, oh, it just automatically updated the, um, the animation. And what this will do is this will superimpose the laws of physics onto um, the spheres. So you can now see that when more and more spheres are being created, they just sit on the surface and they and they either roll away, they don't actually fly up um, unrealistically. So now that we've got the basics correct. Um, you know what, what we now want to do is we now want to tell these particles to move along a, a certain direction or a certain path. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to uh, um, do a send out controller. Um, and I'll just drag it and it can be its own standalone thing. And what we'll need to do is oh sorry, not not um, standalone. We'll need to um, um, add it into the main um, event underneath the physx shape. And then what we're going to do is, um, what, because what we're doing is we're telling the physics shape to be sent out, um, and then what is going to happen is uh, we can we need to assign um, an action for the physics shapes to be sent out across. So send out, and what we want to do is we wanted to also add a path follow um, controller in, and we wanted to and we want to connect these two together. Now, right now, if I re if I replay the animation, firstly, a few things have happened. Firstly, it's all now all of a sudden gone back to dots, and that is because um, by the time that these chain of events get to the send out um, send out option, it's going into another event that is telling it to display as small dots. So first, so what we'll need to do um, is we'll need to um, we'll need to just change this to from small dots to geometry. And you can see now it reverts back to the same geometry that we assigned it in terms of its sphere. Um, again, it's not going to do anything because if I go into path follow, there's actually no shapes for it to follow. So that's the reason why it's just st standing there stationary, waiting for something to happen, waiting for a path to be assigned. So now this is where we can um, begin to draw a few paths so that we can assign it to the path follow controller in which the balls can then um, move along. So I'm just going to go to the create option. I'm going to go to the uh, uh, geometry. Uh, sorry, um, the the, um, the 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 shapes I sh uh, item, and I'm going to go to line, and I'm just going to do a bezier type of line just so that when I click and drag, I can make some really nice curved paths. And then just right click to be done. Um, it's flat, yep. And I might just create another one. I might just um, do something like this, just so that it's got a bit more diversity. I might just do a, a reasonably linear one like this. And then I might just do another one like this. And then I might just do one more that does something like this. So now we've got our five paths, and but we need to tell um, uh, tie flow to acknowledge these paths so that the particles can move along them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select 
um, um, I'm going to select all of these parts. Um, hold down shift. If you want to select multiple at one time, just press and hold down shift and keep highlighting and then let go of shift once you're done. And then now that all five um, parts are highlighted, I'll just I'll go back to path follow and I'll click add selected. And you can now see that the five lines that I've drawn have now been added into tie flow. So, and that line, that control has also been activated. So now we know that when the particles are being sent out, they are going to follow a path that is one of these five lines here. And if I was to replay the animation, we can see that they're not very anxious to follow the path, but they're just moving very erratically. But that's okay, we can fix that. Um, what we'll need to do is, because they're moving so fast at the moment, um, what we can do is we can add a, um, we can add a, a slow controller into um, into this event here, just to tell them to slow down. And what we might do is we might uh, tell them to slow down by to say 85% of their original speed. Um, and then now, when I if I was to replay this animation again, you can see now that they are actually moving and conforming much more to the um, much more closer to the actual paths that we've assigned it. The only thing that's of interest is that no particles seem to be following along this line here, which is a bit odd. So I might just double check this path here. Uh, why is this not being... I might just remove it. Oh, yep. And then I might just add this back in. Um, the only thing I can think of is maybe it's not close enough to um, yeah okay there you go it's not close enough to the um, um, to the to, to the tie flow birthing platform so I might just move this a bit further away uh, closer that is to the platform um, and I might just re-simulate this one more time so now you can see that at least some of my particles are also flowing along this path here where previously they did not so um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you look at this in a perspective view, you can begin to see that people are sort of, well, little spheres are almost crawling out of um, out of the of the tie flow platform. If I go into a top view, you can see that it's probably it's it's almost not unlike people just traveling out of a, a location and following a path. So again, I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. Um, obviously, there are many applications that this can be applied to. But I suppose, you know, it just requires someone to really play around um, a lot more with some of the um, tie flow controls that are available. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this.